Hello, my name is Emmanuel Caplet and welcome to my Vickford Masterclass. You know, I play with Vic for six since the beginning of my drumming life. And it starts with this one, the Ralph Hardiman Drumline 6. I started playing at nine years old in marching drumline. So imagine myself at nine years old with this stick. It looks like a tree trunk, you know? But uh, this is um, the stick I learned perfectly how to understand the rebound. And I develop a lot of my flexibility, my endurance, uh, my stamina with these sticks. All of my technique, I learned, I learned that with these sticks. So even if I play match grip or traditional grip, this is the best pair for me. So this is uh, the first stick of my life. So Vickford, Ralph Hardiman sticks. The second one. We have, of course, the sticks I play since the beginning of the masterclass. And I use normally, like 99% of my time, with the Jojo Mayer sticks. Um, I love these sticks because they are shorter than usual. And I had to find a stick um, who will fit in my hands because I have small hands. So for me, you know, like, been a while. I tried so many different sticks and I was like, I, I have to find something which feels right. And finally, I got this one and I'm very, very happy. And I really like the response. It's quick in my hand. And plus, I know, I know, I know, I hold my sticks way in the back with this one. No, it's not okay. Yeah, it's okay. I'm happy with that. But when I play with my Ralph Hardiman, of course, I play like normally, like this. But the balance for me is perfect like that. And the wrist pounds, you know, like.
And with these sticks, it feels natural and effortless. I can play every style of music, like jazz, pop, fusion, drum and bass, R&B, whatever. So for me, it's perfect. Now I would like to share with you some tips, especially one warm up that I really like since I have nine years old. And it's just how to develop a full stroke, like properly. And this is important to have a great hand technique um, to get speed, of course, flexibility, endurance, your, to develop your stamina, to be comfortable, to play like effortless. This is so important. So basically, Okay, you have to hold your sticks, you know, like this, okay? And just pay attention to your shoulder. You are not supposed to play like this when you are playing drums, but like that, very, very relaxed, okay? And make sure your, your palm is facing down to the floor and not, not like this, okay? Because your wrist is not, is not supposed to work like that, but like this, like when you play basketball. Like that. All strokes are initiated by the wrist and the finger is following the stick movement. Okay, like this. And when you start slowly, it's important to keep your stick high. Okay, you have to come back, you, you have to feel the rebound. Okay, like this. Okay, and a tip, try to play like this on your forearms, like that. So you see the stick? Don't play like this. Use your fingers. Hurt yourself. Not too hard, but okay. <laughs> like this. And you know what? Like the stick is the extension of your arm. So you are supposed to to hit your forearms like this. If your stick goes like this, it's wrong because you break your technique. Your technique is not right, okay? And when you practice like this, you put the pressure at the right place. Okay, and you know, when you play like this, it's the same when you come back to the pad. Like, like this. This is the, the same feel. Okay, so like this. Like that. So, important, play higher. Why? To stretch all of your muscles. There's some people say, no, don't play too high. But if you don't play high in the beginning and you don't stretch anything, you cannot get speed. Okay, you can, but you will force it. You, you will get some tensions and we don't want that. So, full stroke. And when you are going faster, use the same technique. Bring your sticks lower, like that. And you know, at the end, it's just finger control. And breathe, breathe. Don't play like, <sighs> okay, just breathe. This is very important and you can keep focus on what you are doing. Now, I want to share with you a six to plate exercise to develop your single strokes. On the first and second beat, you will play two groups of four, and the feel, by the way, it's in triplet feel, okay? So two groups of four start from the right hand. And on the third beat, you will play a sextuplet, like seven strokes, and you, you finish on the down beat. So it will sound like this, right? And then, you do the same thing from the left hand, okay? So, uh, but the difference is when you will start from the left, you will play on the upbeat. So when you did your 
pattern from the right hand, just do the same thing from the left. So it will sound like this. One, two, three, four. And you do that over and over. So ta 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 Okay? And important again, you have to play higher again. And all the strokes should have the same sound, same intensity. It should sound even. That's it. Okay? We are not supposed to hear accents like this, like Okay? Very even. You know, it's like, you know, the wiper in your car? So, play higher, okay? But don't play like this, please, okay? So, like that. I will do it a little bit uh, faster. So, one, two, three, four. Okay, same thing as the, 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 the previous exercise. Bring your stick slower when you are going faster. And again, you can play like this. You have to push. You know, if you, if you take just the sixth plate, like focus on your right hand, like, like this, and you can Play like four times that thing and then six to play. Like. Left. It will help. And now the cool thing is you can apply it on the drums, you know, like, like this. You can create your own variations. Just try around your kit, like. Again. Focus on your right hand. Da 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 da. So this is it for the sixty plate exercise. So here I have the split brushes. Okay, and you know. Um, I, I play on a TV show since um, September 2020. And in that kind of TV show, I have to play every style of music. So I have to be very versatile and I have to, to have like a lot of different sticks. Uh, it depends on what I have to play. So in my bag, I have three pairs, uh, three different pairs of sticks. So this one, uh, I love to use it, especially when uh, of course, I can play jazz, but like some folk music, and you will see how it sounds like this. Like. I also can play some jazz like this. So, split brushes. <laughs> now, let's see the second pair of brushes.
I introduce you <laughs> the Heritage brushes. These ones are more softer than the other one, okay? So it's like I can play another kind of jazz, like uh, in 12.8, something like this. And of course, I can play some like fast swing or whatever like it. Things like that. I love Steve Gadd. So I have some Steve Gadd brushes, okay? And these ones are very quiet, you know, like Super soft. So, and you can see there's a curve in the brushes, like this. So it sounds different. So you can see, like. Now I want to share with you an hybrid rhythm. It's called Blushda. I really like this one because it reminds me when I was playing in the drum corps, but you have to apply it differently on a drum set. So basically, a Blushda, it's a left-handed flam, like this, a right-handed dedo, and another tap from the left. So it will sound like this, like. You have to start back with the same thing. It's always the same thing. So, flam, right, right, left, flam, right, right, left, flam. Okay, always from the same side, okay? So, like this. And now, the cool thing, just play the flam like your right hand on the floor. And when you are playing around the kit, your flam should be like, not too tight, not like this, like. More. So if I take it slowly, it will be like this, like. You can also go on the toms, like. If I play it a little bit faster, like... You can also do it with the, uh, with, with the ride and the kick. So on the flam, you will play the kick drum at the same time. So like this. So now let's hide it in the feel. Okay, example. Um, Okay, so you can do it on the last measure. So you play a 16 notes, feel like cha 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 on the fourth beat. So cha 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 I will do it slower.
you know, has a session player or a TV show player, if I can say that, uh, you have to be really efficient and productive uh, when you play, especially on TV. Um, and it's important to have a constant sound. Consistency is the key, okay? So when you play a backbeat, okay, your snare sound should sound the same throughout the song, okay? Like that. If you do <laughs> something like I will play, like that, this is wrong, okay? And you don't, you don't want like a sound engineer to put a sample at your place. It's not good, it's really not good, okay? So just focus on your sound when you are practicing and when you play for a session or on TV, your constant sound, you know, it, it's, it's paying, it's efficient, okay? And plus, when you are doing, like, example, a pop song, please play for, for the melody, play for the songs. Don't play for your personal satisfaction. I mean, don't play any chops for just to impress people. We don't care about that. Okay, so if the song is like you have to play a backbeat and it's, it's a pop song especially, just play the right feel at the right place. If you do this, no, it's not the, the, the right thing to do. I know oh, it's fun, I play chops. <sighs> no, play the right thing. Pam, pum, tatutu, bjit, kat, kuku, kakun, kak. Okay, this is more important to play for the songs than for your ego, okay? Just play the right things, that's it. And now, I have an example for you. I will play a pop song from a friend of mine here in Montreal, and you will see, it's very simple, okay? There's nothing flashy. You just have to keep the backbeat throughout the song. And sometimes I don't play because it's like that. So the space, it's important to, to take it too, okay? So I will play like basically boom, cat, kung, kung, cat, kung, cat, kung, kung, cat. That's it. So I introduce you à quoi tu joues. It's time to practice your French. Tu reviens, tu repars, c'est le même élan. Au milieu de la gare, c'est moi qui t'attends. Rêve d'idéal, mon idéal Sombre dans ta vie, ta double vie C'est le feu qui m'éteint au creux de ton cou Tu me prends, me convainc que demain c'est nous Trêve d'étincelle, c'est pour elle Que tu as choisi ta grande vie À quoi tu joues Jusqu'au même point Il crève le futur 
figure que je figure Je cherche mon abri Toi c'est la pluie À quoi tu joues The Route 606. Doop. This one, this is another texture. Okay, it's very different. And you can just play like softer than normal sticks. So if I play a groove, it will sound like this. I like to play some symbols with that sometimes. Like. This is totally different, but it's fun. And also you can play some train beats with them, like... Now, another color I have to show you. Different color. Mallet, timpani mallet, like the T1, American custom. I really, like, I really like these sticks because I can work on another mood, a different mood, like especially I can do some beats on the toms, um, like this. So this is fun to play. And I also use these sticks, uh, especially for swells, cymbal swells, like this. And it sounds cool. Because if you compare with like normal sticks, like, like this, it's not warm. It's like 
it's dry, like. We prefer that kind of sticks for this occasion. You understand? <laughs> cool. Now, this is the Q&A part for you, my fans. On Instagram, I ask you one question. Like, if you have a question to me, what would it be? Just one question about drumming. So, I start at nine years old in marching drum corps, and I fell in love with my instrument. I played marching snare for 10 years. And it was my passion, and I knew right away I want to be a musician as a living. So I learned all of my rudiments, hand technique, and after my high school, I switched to the drum set because for me it was the continuity to pursue my dreams with drums. So I started drumming at 18, and I started gigging after that. My dreams was to play on TV, to do some touring, and I start TV shows and I did that for like close to five, six years. I travel all around the world with a stand-up guy. I'm also a clinician now since a few years and I really enjoy it. And since uh, September uh, 2020, I play on a TV show. It's called Belle Bomb in Montreal. This is a musical show. Yeah, I'm very happy to, you know, to win my life, if I can say that, as a musician. For the drum corps, I always be in love with like Blue Devils, Santa Clara Vanguard, and Madison Scouts. For me, they were the best drum line like, of the world. And I remember when I was young, I was watching my video cassette, like VHS, you know, VHS cassette. And I was like, I want to learn all the snare solo. Uh, from Blue Devils, Santa Clara Vanguard, and Madison Scouts. And yeah, I learned a lot from them in the past. And on the drum set, uh, my mentor is Jeff Porcaro from uh, Toto. And this is with him that I understand how to get a sound. Because when you listen to Jeff Porcaro, when it's him on the album, he has his signature, which is amazing. I also. Uh, like Dave Wickle, when I started drumming, Dave Wickle was a big uh, influence, and also Steve Smith. Of course, if I practice at home, I don't always practice with a practice pad, but I practice slowly around my drum kit. But when uh, I have to play for a show, a concert, I always have my practice pad with me, all the time in my bag. When you don't have time to practice on the pad before a show, but just hold your sticks like this and just practice like that. When you don't, when you don't have time to practice on the pad, or you can also warm up just before, you know, like this, like. And you can count like one E and a two E and a three, like. One E and a two E and a three. This is a very good warm up before playing on the drum set. This is a good question. Uh, you know, you have to find what makes you unique. You have to find your signature. This is so important, but it's hard to find it and it takes a, a long time to develop. And you know, it's not about the notes you play, but how you play the notes. This is the difference. And you know, you can get inspired by people and we have to, to get inspired. But the important thing is you don't want to be a copy of someone else. Anyway, nobody wants to be a copy of someone else. So I think, you know, when you start playing with emotions, when you play with your heart on your instrument, you have something to spread. I think it's a, good start uh, to, to develop your musical and dynasty. This is the end of the masterclass. Thank you everyone for watching. I hope you enjoy it. But before we leave, I have some special thanks to say. 
To my band especially, first, on guitar, Jean-François Baudet, on the bass, Jean-Bertrand Carbou, voice, Marie-Christine de Pestre, keyboards, Camille Gilina, trumpet, <laughs> Fafoui, alias Jean-François Gagnon, and on the saxophone, Marie-Josée Frigon. Another thanks, I want to say, to my sound engineer, Mr. David Joyal. Um, you know, he's working with me since the beginning of my videos back in the days on YouTube. This is him. So the sound you know from me is from him. So I'm very glad to having him with me today, especially. My video director, Mr. Olivier Savoie Campo, is a really good friend of mine and is also an amazing drummer. Yes. And all the technical crew here at La Salle, Juliette Lassonde in Saint-Hyacinthe, all the crew, like, um, like at the office, the technicians were completely amazing with me and patient. <laughs> and you guys at home, guys, girls, all of you there, thank you again for watching. And Vicford, thank you very much for making this happen. I'm very happy and I'm glad to be part of this family. Thank you very much. Bye bye.
Wow.